Hello everybody, and before we start what is technically episode 5, we have a quick addendum to the previous one, episode 4. We look at our status and have gone back to, oops, our proxy character. I'm going to cover one thing that I missed in episode 4, that is that we fought the Erdtree Avatar to the south of the Church of Pilgrimage. So if you come here and then head straight south, to that very large tree, that's what we're going for. So we'll be avoiding any enemies between this church and that boss. Except for maybe one or two that tend to follow us into the boss fight. We don't want to deal with them. Not at all. That would just be this guy, basically, because the rest of them ignored me. Oh, don't get poisoned. Stay out of the clouds. You can handle these guys just like you would anyone else, that is, with the shield and rapier style. We'll be doing the same thing to the boss up here. We also have a stick of America here, so if we die, we can respawn at this point right in front of the boss. And we may have to. Just to speed this process up, I think we'll be summoning the Lone Wolf Ashes to help us in this little fight. So we'll do that now. now. This boss is fairly simple to take care of. Actually, we'll take our Flask of Wondrous Physic. Almost get whapped in the face while doing so. So the way this boss works is that he has that jumping butt slam that he just did and one other attack that do not just pure physical damage but some other things. This is the jumping butt slam. You can choose to roll it or block it. You look at my health right now, that's the amount of damage he did while I was blocking. Which is not too bad. You can handle that plenty of times with the amount of flasks that we have. Like so. See? Not too bad. You can follow the same general rule of block and attack when he attacks. Choosing whether or not to roll, if you trust your own skill, during the butt slam or not. There's only one other attack that you have to watch out for with him. I'll be rolling this butt slam and getting back to stabby stab time. This is the other move. You will summon sort of like floating bubbles here and then slam attack you and you will lose... <laughs> your visuals if you run into these pots in the area. And all you really want to do is lock on and strafe. You just want to run sideways. And that's basically how you handle that situation. He's about to do it again. I'll give you an example. You just start running left or right. Pick a direction. And get ready to block because he will come in with a slam like that most of the time. Sometimes he just stands around, but not often. But it really is a very simple boss if not a bit tedious, like any others with this build. Slow, but practically guaranteed victory. And this move that he's doing right here is the only thing that comes even close to being a threat. So we're going to get to viciously poking the crap out of him for now. <laughs> this build is so simple. I love this stuff. Oh, here comes this again. So we strafe repeatedly just keep running if you can run at an angle where you go away from the boss it's probably the safest way to handle it wow he wants to do nothing but this move but again it is very manageable oop i rolled way too early there and took that big overhead slam but i do believe that's his hardest hitting move and it didn't even take out half of our health so we're good Probably would have been better to put bleed or something on the rapier here, but I don't think I have it on the proxy character. Comes this again, and the overhead slip. Again, the only thing that really gets in the way of that or makes it difficult to deal with is the camera angles and the environment, not even the boss itself. Oh, here comes this again. Strafe, watch out for his attacks, roll if you have to. Don't worry about taking the golden projectiles to the face too much because they do a lot less than his actual attacks. So when it's happening, if you feel as though you're not confident in your rolls, and he's about to hit you with this big old staff in his hands, feel free to just raise your shield and block everything. Here he comes again. I'll try to show a bit of an example. I shouldn't be staggered if I just stand here with my shield up. Yes, it just does some stamina damage and then he'll break your guard like this. Then you can get back to blocking or choose to roll. Pick your poison. Either one works. And there we have it. That is the only thing that was missing. As, hey, what, what are you doing over here? Your boss just felled over. You should probably help him up. You have better things to be doing. 
Oh, I just unequipped my rapier. Whoopsie. But that is it. That is the addendum to episode 4. Now I'm going to hop off of, oops, our proxy character. And we'll go ahead and start episode 5. I'll see you there. Hello everybody. And welcome to episode 5 of the Elden Ring series. And the only difference between last episode and this episode is that we've stepped off the proxy character. So now I have a similar progress to what you would have if you were following along. So I have access to the things that we got in the previous episodes, not just number four. I think the first thing we're going to do is put the Barricade Shield, Ash of War, on our Brass Shield. And on the Rapier, I think we'll put the Golden Vow. Because there have been some people in the comments of one of my shorts pointing out the fact that Holy does more damage to undead creatures. And I knew this, but... For some reason, it didn't really register in my brain that I could attempt this. And we are going for the revenge match against the little baby bird. Well, big baby bird. Which means we have to pass time until nightfall. And then probably hit the grace again because, well, I feel like sometimes it just doesn't register if you just pass it to nightfall. Here we go. Oh, and I guess the only palpable difference is that I've upgraded my rapier to plus three in this, unlike with the proxy character who could only get it to one. If you're following along, you should have enough smithing stones to do that yourself. It's a worthwhile investment, at least for now. Now we'll be coming up here to the right. We don't have to deal with big stone bowman off in the mist. We can just ignore him for the most part. Ooh, goat deer thing. No, no souls for me or bones. I want bones. There we go. The good stuff. Oh man, that one is just tweaking inside that rock. Pretty intense. After an embarrassing defeat, we have to come through here and clear these damn bats out again. Ouch. Just gotta keep them all in front of the shield, essentially. Come on. Just... Just die. I don't even care if I take hits at this point. You guys are annoying. Come on, get over here. Deadzo. Now, what we're gonna do before big angry tantrum baby birdman thing comes down, is we're gonna use the golden vow, Ash of War. And now we'll pick a fight with this thing. Ugh, it spawns in all curled up. And, ugh, ugh, gross. I hate this thing. It's gross. I mean, there's more dangerous bosses for sure, but this thing is still creepy looking. Nope, nope, I've seen that before. <laughs> I sure have. Let's see, we're doing 59 for a body shot? I mean, that's like 20 more damage than I was doing before, so it's not bad. Wait, <laughs> I just equipped just my shield. Nice. Hitting him with the bulk stuff. Oh, here comes the pack. I could block that. Yeah, I mean, this is doing more damage, so it'll save us a bit of time. I think it would have been better off going bleed. I think they can bleed. Pretty sure everything in the game can bleed. No promises. I think anything besides mechanical stuff. Even the undead bleed. Still going to stick with the very standard sword and board method where we just get very close and poke him to death. Yeah, I think bleed probably would have been the proper choice here. Probably would have already had one or two procs. Let's go ahead and heal up. Keep throwing your tantrum, baby bird. That's A-OK. -okay. That's fine. You can break the guard all you want. It's not gonna do anything for you. Oh, the scream. Right, forgot you can't block that. And then the peck. As long as I pay attention and don't get hit by that grab again, I should be fine. Damn grab. The hard part is just keeping him in place. He moves around too much way too much. I think I might have to reactivate the Golden Vow after I chug some Estus, of course. Ugh, oh, stop doing the flips, man. Come and play. Ouch. <laughs> it's damn Pex. Let's go ahead and just chug. Dodge? No? Okay, not enough time. <laughs> you really can't do so much of this by just holding up your shield and hoping for the best. That's a grab. Right, we know this now. We're learning. Headshots are only doing about 82, so it's not a huge difference. Just gotta watch out for that overhead peck, which I think is about to happen. Nope, that's the ground slab. Well, time to chug. Come on, baby bird. I think the bowman can see us from here. I hope not, but I think so. Just get back to stabbing. Yeah, there's the peck. Yeah, we've almost got him down. As long as we play it safe from here, we'll be just fine. 
Now the weapon this baby bird has is actually pretty good. It's useful, it's a big utility item, especially if you're a mage. Is that the grab? Yeah it is. That was weird, I lost stamina as if I blocked it. <laughs> but, but it's a grab. How does that work? It's squeezy. I'm just gonna keep blatantly walking up to his face and attacking. Seems like the best bet. Ouch. Damn scream. Oh my guard. Okay. Almost died there. There we go. Can finally get near his rib cage. And of course it starts pecking. And let me guess it's gonna leap away soon. I'm just gonna heal. Might as well top up while it's having a tantrum. Here, yeah, birdie, birdie, birdie. Come on. Let me guess, peck? Yeah, of course. Oh, got him in the face. Poor, poor baby bird. He done filled. There it is. The sacrificial ass. This thing is actually really good. Now, in terms of damage and moveset, it's not that great, but its special effect is really, really good if you're a mage. We'll check it out when we move into the next area. For now, however, I am going to run through here and hope that I don't get shot in the face because there is a man in the mist. And it's not just the shrooms saying that. There's a big man in the mist who's shooting at us. I just want to make sure that he doesn't hit. There he is. Is he? Oh, it's like he hasn't registered that I'm here. I mean, that works for me. I'm not going to bother killing him. He's got way too much HP. Way too much. Got to dismount anytime you see these blue lines. You can't ride your horse past this point. Now let's step in here, and we are officially at Castle Morn. Now what I'm going to do is, of course, use my souls before I lose them. Use it before you lose it, bucko. And the goal is still to hit at least 30 vigor, and then I think I'll go for 20 endurance. Seems like a sensible split to me. I already have plenty of stamina. And the other thing is that I'm going to take the golden vow off of the rapier. I think for now... <laughs> oh yeah, that's right, we can use the parry on the rapier. It's kind of funny. I think the window for that parry is insanely small. Might be wrong though. You know what, maybe I will keep the golden vow on, but I'll just put it back to standard scaling. So it's not holy. So we can use Golden Vow, but it's not reducing our damage. Seems like the best bet. It'd be better if I had some kind of ability that could heal me, but I don't. So I won't. Let's go ahead and head up this lift into Castle Morn. And we'll be picking a fight with an entire army, like you do. Now we've got a pile of corpses and rubble here, and I think we're just gonna have to clear everything out that's inside of it. We'll start over here though, we want to get the dogs around the edge. We don't want them sneak attacking us while we're dealing with enemies from the front. So, we just handle it this way, <laughs> with very little thought process. There's two enemies, you can just accept your fate and try to murk one of them before they start attacking. It's not a terrible idea. This kind of build is perfectly fine with just taking hits to the front every now and again. Actually, hold on, I can summon things here. Interesting. We only have two different things though. The wolves, which will get deleted because they're plushy, or the jellyfish, which is tanky but can't do damage. Not really. We'll probably summon the wolves after we do a little bit of stuff here. Gotta take out these doggos. Who are more or less gonna just sit there and let me stab them to death? Quite convenient. What are you doing, doggy? Stop it. Give up. That's what all the pros do. Easy peasy. Shield up. Poke aggressively. Beast blood. I don't think we'll be using that anytime soon. That should be the majority of it. Now I'm going to get a bit of distance from the enemies here, and I'm going to show you what the sacrificial ass can do. I actually gotta put it on the left side here. Can I even carry it? No, not really. Weighs five and a half pounds. Well, I'll show you the description to point out what it does here. The second part here, the power of right yet lingers. Whatever that means. A small amount of FP is restored upon slaying a foe. So you can recover mana, basically, whenever an enemy is killed while this is equipped. And it doesn't have to be the weapon that gets the kill. So as an example, if I have it on the left side here, and I... Let's see, what if I just take the Beast Champion stuff off? I mean, I'm losing like 2% damage reduction, but it's a small price to pay. Now if I switch off of the shield, if I were to just have, even unequipped, I'm just two-handing the rapier, if you look at the left there, it shows that I have the Sacrificial Axe equipped, and you can see it on my hip here too. Even with it like that, I will get the FP from killing an enemy, which means that if I have the axe in my left hand, and a bow in my right hand, and I two-hand the bow, and then use Mighty Shot, this probably won't kill, but this is just an example. If you were to use magic, it would be a pretty good idea. There you go, and I got at least half of the FP that I just used back. I mean, we could check the exact amount, might as well. We have 64 FP, now I'll kill one without using any. If I can reach the thing, let's just jump forward, there we go. Come here buddy, let's play. I'll use the rapier. 
just wail into him. Not worried. So we had 64 FP. We recovered four. So we get about four FP per kill. So if you have an Ash of War or ability that requires just four FP, then you could infinitely use it, assuming you kill an enemy with it. But it's a pretty neat thing, because I could use the Mighty Shot, like I'm going to actually, to pick off a few of these guys after I craft some arrows. I don't have many, but I'm going to use this to pick off a few of these guys. What the? Oh, I missed. <laughs> I hit someone in the background, apparently. See if we can hit this one in the head, too. Ooh, Rob. Let me just do this. And then when I'm done, I'll just run around with the rapier and kill things with that while using the, well, while having the axe on the side to get my FP all the way back. It's going to be a good time. Why does that keep missing? What if I just jump forward? No? It's just something about this angle, I guess. Try from here. There we go. That's what I like to see. Let's try one more right here. Yeah, right in the face. They're just tall enough that the default angle works. Then we get this one. But if you are running a magic build, it's a good idea to, honestly, just use the sacrificial axe as your primary melee weapon. So you can run through all of your magic, then use the axe to get your magic back, and then go right back to pew-pewing. Good old pew-pew. Uh, this is the bigger guy. We're gonna want to... Hit him as much as we can before he gets to us. We might even want to use the shield. Yeah, let's try doing an aimed mighty shot. Right about there should do. Yeah, that'll do it. Hit him with one while he's coming this way. Boop. Oh, we can fit another one in. He's pretty slow, and I won't waste any more arrows. Now we'll try to handle the rest with the rapier. Oh, damn. <laughs> this guy has like 10 years of wind-up. Man, that is just insanely slow. I think he only does two, though. So it's not too bad. Well, this is just an example of something you can do. I'm probably not going to be doing this for this playthrough because I'm not a mage. I don't use FP, but this is just to show us an example. I think I killed most of the enemies already. I know we have one over here. Is there any more? I don't want to get sneak attack. Oh yeah, there's two of them. There's one right here. We'll ignore him and get this guy from a distance. Pew pew. Come on, buddy. Let's play. I don't know how he did damage there. It's very weird. Must have been like the startup of an attack and I just had too much poise. But this is just an example of how this works. I am going to go back to doing not this. I'd rather just have as much damage resistance as possible and not use magic. At least for this playthrough. Let's chug. We have more than enough Estus for a place like this. <laughs> Apparently if they jump you can just yeet them out of the air with a little poke. Good times. Let's come up here. Get these butterflies. Again, we might at some point use fire pots. Just not right now. There are some places where you can just get all the resources you could ever want for fire pots right next to a bonfire. So you can just keep resetting, which is pretty convenient. Let's go ahead and sneak attack Mr. Pumpkinhead here. Two charged heavies. Now we'll do three. Ooh, staggered boy. Hit it with another one and then... Ooh, rough. <laughs> Thoroughly penetrated. Let's grab this loot. He didn't stand a chance. Three smithing stones. Not bad. It's only tier one, but still. Huh. Pumpkinhead man dropped a sanctuary stone. They have a pretty high drop rate for that. This makes me curious. If I whack them with my shield, how much damage will it do? Oh, damn. Instant stagger. 103. <laughs> okay, that works. I mean, the brass shield isn't exactly a murder tool, but if you're in the mood, I'd better be pretty good if it was upgraded. If you use the fingerprint shield, which is... We haven't seen it in this playthrough, but it is the best shield in the game. Pretty verifiably. But if you use the fingerprint shield... Oh, what's up, buddy? It is actually an... In Ooh, Iron Cleaver. Neat. It is actually an insanely strong weapon, just using the fingerprint shield as a melee weapon. Like, it, it is just powerful. So we have a couple dudes over here who are going to fly at us, and I don't want to deal with it. So that's where we use the pew pew. Pew pew time. I missed. I, okay, I guess I'll just use an aimed shot. I just want to make sure I only have to fight one of them at a time. Gotta angle it a little bit higher. There we go. It's not about the damage, it's just about lowering them over. Come and play, buddy. Come on. Who's a good little flying weird thing? You are, I guess. Come on. Oh, he's got a bow forgot about that. There we go. One less flying creature. Hooray. Now let's shoot this one. They're kind of like propped up like gargoyles. Aim a little higher maybe? Yeah. First try. Ouch. Damn, he's got snipes. His arrows go in a straight line. Why don't mine? Mine have an arc. He's got super demi human strength. You wanna just come this way and stop shooting? I'd appreciate it, but were you just a bow guy? Maybe he's just a bow guy. But to jump and attack him. And, and he's gone. All right. Well, <laughs> fall damage. <laughs> Rest in pasta. Now let's take out this guy. Get him with a good old sneak attack. 
Oh, I guess sneak attacking with the rapier did 194, that was? So, yeah, I guess it's better than the shield. There's nothing over there. I will cross this way. I could go over that way. Should we even bother? Nah, probably not. I never do. I'm not looking to follow a trail of exposition. I don't care about storylines. I'm here to beat the game. Quickly, in preparation for Shadow of the Erd Tree. Do I have enough for level up? I do wonder. I do. Wonderful. We'll go up to 26 then. 26 vigor. We're getting tanky. Memorize spells. I have spells and spell slots, but you start with two even if you're not a mage. That's right. Very interesting. You know what we could? Mix the flask of wondrous physic. So, the wondrous physic starts with, well, comes with the crimson crystal tier. Then we have this one, which we got from the Erd Tree avatar. The Crimson Burst tier, and the Opaline Bubble tier. I don't think we'll be using those. Those are for when you're planning on taking hits. I'm never planning on taking hits. We'll do the Crimson Burst for slowly restoring HP, I guess, because it's going to be more useful than the other one, which restores half HP. That's not going to do anything for us. And the one that we got behind that giant, I think back in episode 2 or something, the Strength Knot Crystal tier. This will give us a Strength Boost of 10 for... Like five minutes? It lasts a long time. And now, we are going to walk off a cliff. You know, pretty standard Sunday activities. Should we jump across there? I don't think there's a benefit. We're gonna come down this way. And if we look right down here, there's a dead body that has something we want. This is called a stone sword key. We have, I think, six of them at this point. You want to collect those any chance you get. Anything down here? We have weird slug things. Probably kill those in a moment, but for now, I'm going to prioritize the sleeping demi-humans. Definitely want them dead first. Definitely. Don't want them kicking up a fight, especially because these two have wings. And I ain't about fighting that winged foe. Inside here is another demi-human. Should I get his attention? Sure. I'll just give him a little pew-pew and call him out. Here, buddy. Come and play. At a boy. Who's a good little dammy human? I think they're too small to be doing grabs, so there's that. And we walk into this room and we look up. You can see there's like a slug on the ceiling there. If you have magic, pew pew him. If you got a bow, shoot him. Otherwise, he'll fall on your head when you grab that loot. You don't want that. It's just a pickled turtleneck, you know? Just a good old snackaroni. Oh, man. <laughs> Holy crap, this is gonna take forever. <laughs> this thing is insanely tanky. This thing is specifically resistant to physical damage. If I wanted to, I could actually. I think there's two more, so I'll just make an example of it. Oh, yay, it dropped glass shards. Huh, I wonder what the point is of putting a ghost in a cage. I'm not gonna ask. These slugs are into weird things. Here's what we'll do. On this left side here, we will put fire. Fire? I haven't crafted them. Right. We're going to item crafting. And I only have two cracked pots. Well, I have to go buy more. We'll craft two fire pots and equip them on the left side of this little secondary hut. And you see the slugs here? I'm going to hit this one with a fire bomb and we'll see. Yeah, 350 damage. And it'll be similar if you use magic. They're just hyper resistant to physical, which is why this rapier does absolutely piddly damage. If you have a weapon that's mixed elements, it'll delete them pretty quickly. But, otherwise, you're going to want to stick with things like the fire pots. If you even kill them, they're insanely slow, so it's one of the <laughs> many enemies in this game that you're probably better off just avoiding. Besides, as far as I know, they just drop glass shards. Which, apart from sprinkling in your enemy's cake, I don't really think it's going to serve much purpose. Just get back to crossing this bridge and murdering all the demi-humans on it. Oh, is that another slug thing? I can't craft because I'm now considered in combat. I have to poke it to death. Woe is me having to poke this thing a million times. Maybe I should go and farm some cracked pots or look for all the locations for them just to trivialize these kind of things. It'd also be good to farm some animal bones at some point. Having a massive stack of throwing knives can be insanely convenient. Because say an enemy has that much health and you just don't want to approach them. Like maybe you're about to die. You don't want to equip the bow because it's too slow and then you gotta put your shield down. If you have throwing knives, you could just yeet, yeet it. Or do what I'm doing and just scratch your ass cheek. Because I don't have firebombs. But I don't have any. I don't have any animal bones, I just use them for, well, other stuff. The tarnished golden sunflowers can be used for holy pots as well. Ooh, we could have used that against the bird. 
Of course, we only have two pots, two cracked pots, so it wouldn't have been that great. Huh, interesting. I got nearby, and this guy immediately just knew where I was. Oh well, works for me. Fighting on a bridge. Let's go, buddy. I should be able to just sword and void this guy just fine. He doesn't have grabs, so... He just does a bit of stamina damage. Worst case scenario, he'll break my guard, and we'll just go back to Nooch. The good old neutral. Yeah, see. Guard broken, but it doesn't matter, because he's too slow. Easy peasy. Like I said, most broken build in the game. Trivialize like 90% of the game. But that might be putting it lightly. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Then we're gonna go ahead and climb up this ladder. There's a nice talisman in here. I think this is the jumping one? I might be right about that. Or I might be wrong. Is this the impaling one or the combo one? Twin blades. I'm guessing twin blade. Yeah. So the way that talisman works, it enhances the final hit of chain attacks. So the easiest way to show that would probably be... Yeah, the shield. This has a 4 hit R1 chain attack, so if I go 1, 2, 3, 4, that final attack where I slam it into the ground would do, I think, 50% more damage if I have that Twin Blade Talisman on. Granted, I'm not going to use anything like that. The Talisman, oddly enough, is better on weapons that are bigger and slower, because if I do 2 heavy attacks with a Rapier, it's just a quick 1 and a 2. So that second hit would count as the end of a chain. Let's roll off here onto this roof, and then we'll come down this way. So on big slower weapons that only have two R1s in their entire combo chain are usually better for that talisman, if you even use it. Oftentimes there's even better rurer options. Uh, we have a scarab here, but I think this one... Yeah, that just re restores flasks, I guess. Seems a little almost too forgiving to put a healing scarab there. Just keep running across this, or running along this rampart wall. Roll on down here. Now we've got a hole in the floor here. But we're going to try to walk on this middle beam to get this loot, obviously. Also, since I'm here, I will in fact craft more fire pots. I think we're going to start using that as a standard. It's so easy to get the mushrooms and fire stuff. Now we're going to walk off the middle of this beam. If you look closely, there's another beam down there. But we're trying to hit that. There we go. And we're doing this so cautiously because there's rats and things down here. And we don't really want to deal with them. So I'm going to try to mighty shot this one. Once it's not directly under the beam. Come on, here we go. Try to take it out in one shot if possible. That's not working. Three shots? Yeah, three shots. There's also a demi-human down there. I'm pretty sure there's more than one rat. So we'll just start working on the demi-human using the bow. And I just shot the beam. Let's go ahead and stand just barely off the edge here and then try another mighty shot. There we go. One more and a standard shot to save FP. And there's one more rat down here, but we can handle that by ourselves. Even if there's two of them, we'll be fine. We just don't want... Oh, there's three of them. Of course there is. Let's go ahead and back ourselves into a corner here to give them less angles to attack us from. We're not a corner, a wall. Either one works, really. Oh no, our guard is broken. We took a single hit. This build really is busted. You can make any amount of mistakes. Got a whip. Whoosh! I very rarely use that in these games. So we've crafted two fire pots. We've got some more butterflies back. They're everywhere. There's constant campfires. And right over this way, there is even a site of grace, which we're going to be hitting. And I think I'm going to actually replace the golden vow on the wrap here because we just went from one site of grace to a rather long journey, making our way to a second site of grace, and proceeded to not use golden vow once. Instead, I'm going to put bleed on this to use it on a boss that will be coming up soon. Now we're going to run our happy... Happy took us over this way. I think there's two demi-humans this way. This guy and the one other dude who I can't lock on to, but he's on the right side of my screen there. Guess we'll prioritize Axe Man. I'm gonna ask him a question. How does this feel? On a scale of 1 to 10, how many needles does this feel like? Ouch, no, it's four hits. Got it. Let's go and just hit him out of the... Oh, oh, okay. He just... Um, well, he's down there now. That's cool. Let's grab this. <laughs> Just some random throwing daggers. I, I have a very large arrow in my head. Um, that is... That's a big old arrow. I think it's more feather than arrow, really. <laughs> it's kind of a neat little accessory, actually. And then we have jellyfish over here. I don't think there's any particular loot in this area that's worth mentioning. And we're gonna leave the jellyfish alone, right? Yeah. Screw it, we'll leave the jellyfish alone. Now we're gonna make our way over here to this strange piss waterfall. Yeah, this is a boss gate. Basically just looks like somebody's taking a bit of a tinkle, 
above the doorway, and right before the boss is when you want to take your flask of wonders physic. And now we murder. Here is our boss man, Leonide Misbegotten. Now you can summon in this fight, you can do a multitude of different things to make this easier. I'm just gonna sword and board to continue to prove how truly ludicrous this build is. Holy stamina damage. Truly ludicrous, I say. <laughs> Maybe it's just a bad matchup with this guy. There we go, we got a bleed. I think the big thing is that once he disengages, you should do the same. Oh, he hit me from behind. That was interesting. So when he does that big swing, I think it's just the big swing. Ouch. Yikes, but... Okay, so maybe the sword and board just isn't good against this guy. We could have farmed for a bigger shield in other places, but this is still fine. Again, we have loads of flasks, and if we really wanted to, we could clear some distance, maybe, if he'll <laughs> stop chasing me down, and do something along these lines. Lone Wolf Ashes. And now he has to deal with all of that. It should distract him while we poke him in the tuchus with our rapier. Now this wasn't really necessary. We still have six flasks. We've only used, what, one or two? But... Just to prove that <laughs> this really isn't a difficult boss fight. This is actually a pretty early game one. And we're only at like half health. We do have the Crimson Burst or whatever it is that's giving us gradual healing, but I don't like to rely on that. The more you stand around, the more chances they have to do something janky and kill you. But there we have it. Boss Slade, Grafted Blade Greatsword, is actually a very good two-handed weapon. I think it's... One of the few legendary weapons that can achieve S scaling and strength, I think. Let me take a peek. Graft. Graft. Where? Where? There it is. Grafted Blade Greatsword. Well, it starts at C, but pretty sure each upgrade gives it a pretty exponential bump. It also has a very good Ash of War, Oath of Vengeance, which can only be put on this weapon. It doesn't exist anywhere else. Swear an oath upon the great sword to avenge the clan of blah blah blah. Temporarily raise all attributes for a certain duration. And while the effect is active, poise will also be increased. I don't know how much, but it sounds pretty neat. Let's go ahead and touch grass. Take a step outside, breathe some fresh air. Do I have enough for a level up? That's the question. I do. 27 vigor. Actually, no, we'll hold off. Methinks we're going to travel around and look for any merchants that might have cracked pots. Starting with the Castle Morn Rampart merchant. I don't know if I bought anything from him, but we're about to find out. Yes, we are. Hello, merchant man. I know. I stop by here like every five minutes. Maybe I just like you that much. Oh, we did buy his cracked pot. In which case, see you later, nerd. Now, where are the other merchants? This is just Selen, who sells sorceries. We'll check out this merchant at the Church of El El. What a name. I haven't read too much of the lore, but I have never heard any reference of a character named El. Let's see, did I? No, he's got three cracked pots. We'll buy those. Hmm, pot. And while we're at it, take a peek at any other merchants that might be here. Have I come across any other merchants? This is this one, but I know he doesn't have cracked pots. He has a couple books. I think we've more or less hit our cap on merchants. What is this? Finger Reader Crow, now in the middle of Caled. Neat. Well, there's that. Now that we've finished up our cracked pot farm, I think this is going to be the end of episode 5 of the Elden Ring series. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next episode. But for now, goodbye. Thank you.